So you're interested in karate and maybe that's for yourself and maybe that's for your kid. Now, if you have some interest in karate, I think that's a great thing. What that means to me is that you've started to become interested in the martial arts. You're most likely looking for something like uh, the ability to, to engage in self-defense. Um, and you're also probably interested in things like discipline, focus, and confidence. And these are all great things for yourself or for your kids. If I had to venture a guess, the reason that you're interested in karate probably has been spurred on by something like the, the movie The Karate Kid or the follow-up TV series uh, Cobra Kai has probably put that into your consciousness. I love uh, both of those things. I think they're fantastic. Um, and I think that overall, uh, you know, karate has a lot to offer people. But I don't think it's likely to get you all of the things that you are dreaming of getting. That is, it won't get it in the full sense. Um, the discipline, focus, confidence aspect, I think it's going to potentially deliver on that best. But when we start looking at self-defense, I think karate is going to fall short of the goals that you intend for yourself. Uh, karate is a striking-based martial arts. And if you understand self-defense well, and if you adjust your self-defense fantasy to imagine a scenario in which you are in a potentially dangerous confrontation with someone who's actually larger than you. If you are at a range where striking is possible, where punching and kicking is possible, it is much better for you to run away. Because if you can punch and kick, that means they don't have any sort of hold on you. And you are much better off, much better served, especially when it's someone bigger than you. Getting away, getting help, um, you know, finding yourself to somewhere that can be safe and, you know, calling the police, basically. Because there are a great many people in the world whom you could strike them very hard and be very good at striking and they are not going to get knocked out by that blow. Just a cursory review of some boxing matches will show you that, that there are people on this planet that can take upwards of 300 strikes to the head from professionals who train at throwing punches as hard as they can, and they're not capable of knocking people out. Not with the kind of consistency that you would need to have to be able to rely on something like karate to defend yourself from, uh, you know, an assailant. I'm not saying it would hurt your odds of getting out of that situation, but I wouldn't consider that a something I could depend upon or something that I would want to devote an enormous amount of time to given its lack of dependency. Now, what I would offer is that Jiu-Jitsu, which is maybe a martial art that you haven't heard of, is the martial art that you're really looking for. That is a martial art that's actually going to deliver on the discipline, focus, and confidence. But it's going to deliver in the self-defense realm in a much more consistent and reliable manner. Now, we know that it works. Jiu-Jitsu works. We know it works because back in around 1993... UFC 1 happened, and we had fighters from many different disciplines, and the absolute smallest fighter in the entire competition, the smallest fighter in a competition with no rules, with uh, no time limits, the smallest fighter in there, a jiu-jitsu fighter, came out, he won three matches against three grown men, three trained fighters in different disciplines, and he beat them all in one night. Each match was under three minutes for him. Now, how did he do that? He used jiu-jitsu. Well, what is jiu-jitsu, you may ask? It's a grappling or wrestling style of martial art. What you will learn how to do is to avoid the striking range altogether and not take chances on throwing punches because the probability of getting knocked out is too high. 
Um, you will learn how to get up, get free, and get away with jujitsu. So that if someone were to get on top of you or to get a hold of you, you could get yourself free back to that range where there's no connection. And when there's no connection, I'm going to leave. And also what you learn in jiu-jitsu is if I do need to engage, how to move past the striking range, actually get to that close uh, up quarter, close quarters range and be able to bring my opponent down and start on top of them and use things like uh, arm locks and more preferably chokes to stop somebody, okay? Jiu-Jitsu has a proven record in self-defense. Every month I see a new news report of some Jiu-Jitsu practitioner um, not only being able to defend themselves because someone attacked them, but maybe even helping law enforcement to subdue someone without doing any real damage or uh, being able to help someone else who is being attacked. Because there is another component to self-defense, which is not just defending myself, but the ability to defend other people around me. And chokes are amazing for that because a choke is going to go, we, we do in, what we do in jiu-jitsu is blood chokes, okay? And that's attacking um, blood flow to the brain. So it takes the tough guy factor out of things, no matter how big or how strong you are, if we reduce the blood flow to your brain, you will pass out. And these are proven things. You don't have to take my word for it. You can start going on YouTube and you can, you know, just start like jujitsu chokes, man. Like you can just start Googling all these different terms and you're going to find an enormous amount of videos. You're going to find an enormous amount of record for jujitsu working. Um, I don't feel that you are going to see as consistent a record if you start doing the same thing for karate. One thing I can say for certain is you're not going to find a consistent record of karate fighters being successful in mixed martial arts, in situations where we've reduced the rules as much as possible. And we've just said, okay, hey, we're gonna have these two guys fight. We, we just don't see the success record from karate fighters there that we do from jujitsu fighters and other types of fighters. It's simply uh, not a proven thing. Jiu-jitsu at this point is the only martial art that if you want to compete in mixed martial arts, it is an absolute prerequisite. You must know it or you will not last, okay? You will get beat. And, you know, so in my opinion, if you're interested in self-defense, if you're interested in that discipline, focus, and confidence, come on down to SBG Texas and come check us out. Uh, our whole business, our whole model is built around the idea of, you know, giving people the best of self-defense and in the case of kids, I'm giving them the best of self-defense and I'm building that discipline. And I believe that discipline is the, the vehicle through which we create focus. And focus gives us accomplishments that are real, real accomplishments that we can build sustained confidence off of. Okay. I hope to see you at the gym and I hope this was informative for you.